in my day, I would have trashed you young whippersnappers. Back in my day, when I still had my washboard abs and was diesel as hell, none of you would have dare, dare stepped in the ring with me. And it's incredibly difficult to be a, a content creator. And it's incredibly difficult to be a successful content creator. And it's incredibly difficult to make that success last for 10 years. If you are a creator and you do wanna buy my book, it's $10 for a Kindle book and it's $14.99. There's no productive way to spend 10 to $14 anyway. There's not that many productive ways to spend $15 and better yourself. There's very little downside to buying a $15 book. Buying a $15 book is not gonna be a waste of money. In terms of $15 to better yourself, I'm not here to hawk my book, but I'm just saying it's like, ah. Whew. It's come to my attention that I've been challenged to research more thoroughly. While the original video was simply a opinion piece on the matter, opinion piece to start the conversation about consumer awareness and protection which just sparked a debate where half the comments agree with me and are defending me while the other half wishes i knew how to shut my mouth this whole debacle made a very specific youtube advice channel speak up about me yep that's right, Roberto Blake. It was a glorious fight on Twitter that not only led to a public Twitter call, since Roberto thought it best to do some damage control, which I found hilarious, but for me to finally research more thoroughly, which apparently includes buying his book, ah yes, cause that won't benefit you in any way, and his unbiased research. Well, Roberto, why would I do that when you literally called me a clout goblin and then blocked me? <laughs> I'm not making that up. You're the one who started name calling, not me. I was just addressing an honest concern I had for the platform. But oh no, when genuine criticism comes your way, you gotta shut it down and do damage control. Wait a minute, you can't do that. That wasn't the right move. Uh, we meant something that doesn't keep us accountable. Yeah, literally make a video about anything else. There's something else I have to address that I feel not everyone understood. The video was from the perspective of the failure stories, which makes sense why Camp A was fully on board with this concept. While this is the case, the failure stories and the success stories are valid experiences, which makes me realize how grave an area this topic was in the first place, which is probably why no one made a video about it yet. Well, that is until I became a clout goblin. Listen, it was not a hit piece. I was not excessively critical. I was honest with how I felt on the matter. You can be successful with or without courses. You can be a failure with or without courses. It doesn't help to bash the other side for their genuine experience. I can't speak from the experience of a success story since that's not my personal experience. So therefore, it made sense why the comments were split down the middle. Because half the comments understood the insecurity of the failure stories, while the other side have their success stories and felt the need to tell me to buy a course, criticizing me for not even trying out a course. Personally, I don't think it necessarily mattered because if I took a course, course and was a failure story, well then they would say, well then you just didn't implement the info well enough to be successful. So either way, it wouldn't have mattered. I still would have been criticized for being a failure. Also, I don't think people realize how much these courses actually are. Roberto Blake's one-on-one -on -one session is like $700. Do you really think I have the money to take this course or even anybody or everybody's course and make a video about it? No, I don't have the budget for that. And most people don't. Most people don't even have the money for even one of these courses, especially if you are an adult who has bills to pay. Trust me, I know. I don't live with my parents anymore. Thanks, comment. Just because we disagree, it does not make me a troll. It does not make me a hater or a clout goblin. Just a person asking genuine concerning questions. Both camps are valid with their personal experiences, yet just can't see it from the other side. And the few that did understand the true point of the video. More awareness, more honesty, more transparency. That's what we all want. That was the point of the video. Not necessarily to bash anyone, just to put a little pressure on to see what would happen if they got criticized for how they run their business. Anyone is allowed to criticize anyone, which is why I personally have not deleted a single comment from the original video and have tried to respond to every single one, mostly because I never want to be an echo chamber where everyone just agrees with me all the time because that's not constructive. Unlike Roberto Blake's replies, I've read basically all of them. <laughs> I will give credit to some people. Most of the advice channels just completely ignored my video, at least currently, and rightfully so. 
but one person didn't. Since Roberto Blake blocked me, and I'm sure he doesn't want to speak to me, fair enough, I don't want to speak to me either, we're going to go over all of the criticisms he had of me and the video on Twitter, go over his damage control call, and then research thoroughly to see, well, why was he so upset? Well made, well edited, and scripted video. Good intrigue and premise. Poor research! Would like to see James V. Janey, a YouTuber who I also really like, cover the topic as his research is probably the best in the business, and he's taking coaching abs products, I don't know what that is, including Ali Abdal's cohort course. I feel like that was a typo. <laughs> First of all, you can't just say poor research to something just because you disagree with it. The research I personally did was years of personal experience, as well as finding all these creators to talk about. Also, of course you want James to make a video on it because James has personal experience with it. So does that mean that if James made a video on you, you would actually like it despite it not being in your favor? Probably not especially if it hurts your reputation have you seen this guy's videos like he doesn't make positive videos anyone telling you YouTube is a game of luck is projecting their insecurity for their lack of results or wants to sound the appropriate amount of humble if most creators told everything they did on their journey it would eliminate the notion of that luck so are these big YouTubers projecting insecurity? I think not. And to us who aren't successful, obviously insecurity drives the traffic for these advice channels. So I don't know why he's complaining about his own market. Also, joke's on you. I literally have low self-esteem. It's not a front. And like I said, it's luck and hard work. But luck is still a factor. You can't just say it isn't. These big YouTubers were in the right place at the right time. Do you think they would be successful if they made these videos on daily motion? I think not. I've watched the grind of people who finally hit 10k or 100k and have known them since they were at 2k and I wouldn't dare to disrespect what they did by calling it luck. You can clown on me for it if you want but YouTube isn't luck. It's a popularity contest. You can't be successful on just hard work. If that were true, I know a lot of my friends would be full-time YouTubers right about now. So yes, luck is a factor. And doing something nobody else has done will definitely get you an audience quicker, but that's obvious. But that's even luck because a lot of people have done a lot of things on YouTube already, which means there's a chance that it's already been done. I was lucky for not only thinking of the idea for the topic of the original video out of nowhere, but putting it into action by making a video on the topic when no one else had. And yeah, sure, you can argue that it's a popularity contest, that argument makes more sense than saying there's literally no luck in YouTube. But you're arguing that luck isn't a factor when it so clearly is. YouTube definitely is a popularity contest because whoever does something first will most likely be successful at it. But it's not guaranteed. It was luck that Roberto responded to my video in the first place, especially since no one else did. It was luck that his audience kept commenting on my video instead of just ignoring me. I don't control I don't control Roberto Blake, I don't control his audience, that's out of my control. This has never happened with any other video of mine. But yes, at least we agree that YouTube is a popularity contest because people rise and fall on YouTube all the time. PewDiePie isn't even the most popular YouTuber anymore. So yes, the failure rate is about 90% or higher. And you know why? The outcomes are similar to other endeavors and careers. However, there are things that are proven to work in proportion to your ability. See. That's what we need more from these advice channels. Honesty, transparency, self-awareness. Thank you, Roberto, for actually stating that because not a lot of people realize that. These people will never say this up front though because they want their sales. And yeah, some things just work, like Mr. Beast styled videos. They get clicks, but that doesn't necessarily mean everybody should become Mr. Beast. As for luck, just remember, no amount of luck will improve a situation where you have poor, poor character, poor presentation, poor judgment, and no confidence. Without those things, no serendipity will benefit you as much as someone who has those traits. It is your personality! Obviously, practice makes perfect. Like yes, character, presentation, judgment, and confidence are all important factors when it comes to YouTube. And in general, and since serendipity means the occurrence and development of events by chance in a happy or beneficial way, aka when things happen by luck in a positive way. So saying that luck isn't a factor and then saying, but like even if luck was a factor, you still need good character, presentation, judgment, and confidence. Which I'd like to think I personally do. But since luck doesn't exist, that means I should be YouTube full time now, right? Wait, no?
But I have a good personality. Like sure, I'm not fake happy or fake energetic like a lot of YouTubers, but I'm chill. I'm honest. I like to be objective. Oh, that's not good enough? But I have all those things. Oh man. I guess it really isn't all about that. Your success in YouTube, all other things being equal in terms of time, training, tools, and even talent will be dependent on your personality slash character, your mindset, and your work ethic. Just like most of life tends to work, but most people aren't honest with slash themselves. Yes, all of those can help. And I'm always honest with myself. In fact, to a fault where I literally overthink everything. His phrasing is confusing, however. I will say, you can have all the time, training, tools, talent, personality, mindset, and work ethic. But as you said, the failure rate is about 90% or higher. So maybe it's not just those things. Let me be harsh AF. The people, <laughs> let me be harsh AF. The people most critical about YouTube advice or the people who obviously don't follow any of it. Like I said, I've watched these channels for years. I've used all of this free advice on YouTube. I'd rather get advice from someone who doesn't have a paid course. Like a YouTuber who's been on the platform since it started. The intention for these channels are much more clear simply with what's in their about section. They want you to know about their paid content. Also, BTW, most of my advice is not for anyone who sincerely wants to do YouTube for fun. There is a reason I don't like monetizing my video games or taking photographs or doing my own art because then it would mostly become less fun. If you're just in it for fun, ignore me. I'm in the middle where I'm not full time, but I want to be, but I, like many, don't have the funds to throw hundreds of dollars at these people. So it's not the money I'm against, it's how you get that money. For warning, if you do a video like this and then criticize people and their products, do your research more thoroughly. You dunked on my YouTube starter kit as free info. I charge $99 and did no research to know it's a template bundle for 100 plus Photoshop files for $99 plus other stuff. Ah, there it is. Do research more thoroughly. Oh, you mean like going on your website and seeing that you sell a bunch of different things? On Create Awesome Media, you have two photography lessons, one for $750, one for $2,500. Even though you said that, there is a reason I don't like monetizing my video games or taking photography or doing my own art because then it would most likely become less fun. Then. Why are you selling photography sessions? I even checked to see who owned Create Awesome Media, and you are the owner. You also have three different design services for $600, $1,200, and $1,500, and the custom website design services for $2,000, and two different courses for $3,500. I could hire you to speak for an amount of money that is Oh wait, that's interesting. It's it's not listed on your website. Your new book that you literally dropped yesterday is anywhere from 10 to $25, which is definitely the cheapest option out of all the ones I've listed so far. Oh, and what's this? The Awesome Creator Academy store. Regarding my original video, you criticized that I supposedly didn't know it was a template bundle for $100 on the site. And because I was looking on my phone, the formatting was weird. But when you look on desktop, you can clearly see that Roberto has a lot more than just the YouTube starter kit. You have the brand deal starter kit for $100, a Creator Academy Pro membership for $60 a month, three coaching bundles, one for $300, one for $700, and one for $6,000. There's a live virtual workshop for 200. I could keep going, man. You're the one who told me to do more research, so I did. Do you all see how expensive all of these things are? If you add up the total of each thing, you get $26,420. <laughs> nice. So basically to put all that into perspective, yeah, you're not gonna buy all of these courses. You may only get like one or two, but the fact that there are this many that exist actually surprises me. Guess it goes to show what thorough research can do. Thanks, Roberto. Will I be purchasing any of these? No. Mostly because I don't want to give him money. I know how to do most of the things that the bundles are for. And realistically, I could find something way cheaper if I wanted to. I don't need them because I already know how to make videos. I know how to get attention if I really wanted it. Just look at what's on trending. But I'm in this more so for the long haul because I know the content that I want to make and it's not something that is trend worthy. You're also criticizing products you never bought, which itself is dishonest when questioning someone's credibility and reputation and calling their niche and practices predatory. It's disingenuous 
is to challenge people's credibility if you can't even describe a product accurately. So basically, because I didn't buy your ridiculously expensive course, I'm the dishonest one. I'm allowed to criticize the price of a course, even if I didn't buy it. I could have used the word exploitive instead of predatory in my title, but come on, man. I wanted a good title and thumbnail, just like you taught me. I can challenge anyone's credibility if I feel like it needs to be challenged for the sake of consumer awareness and protection. The fact that I had to make the original video only for you to go on a rant on Twitter to finally say the failure rate is about 90% or higher is disingenuous in and of itself that you don't make this more aware on your YouTube channel and that I, a video game essayist, had to pry that out of you. Says a lot. Also, nobody is obligated to buy any of this stuff, but your peers with 100K to 1M have found helpful. Oh no, but I only have 4,000 subscribers. Oh man, I wish I would have known that before I spent money on it. Too bad I didn't get any warning except for a Twitter thread that only four people liked. Not every product is for everyone, and I specifically discourage creators who aren't monetized buying anything other than equipment. Oh no, but I only made four dollars a month on YouTube. Oh man, I wish I would have known that before I spent the money. Too bad I didn't get any warning except in a Twitter thread that only four people liked. But there is no downside to buying books. As someone who has a wife who's a bookaholic has a huge bookshelf in the living room and I keep being told that she wants another bookshelf even though we don't have space for it plus the hundreds of dollars we spent on books already, I would highly disagree. If you're someone in my community that has gone full time with YouTube and has been helped by my content, let me know if you want to come oh the podcast this month or next month to chop it up and talk about it. Maybe it would help people see the success stories in this community. Oh no, but I only have 4,000 subscribers, which means I'm not full time. Oh man, I should spend $5,999 on Roberto Blake's premium coaching package. All right, so that was a complete mess, but it's still not over. I wish it was because this is when Roberto decided to hop on a public Twitter call to vent even more. Oh, I've been on YouTube for years, but with no time freedom from a nine to five job, no extra energy, like, no, like there's a gap between your time freedom and their time freedom. Like people do not understand that your two years on YouTube are not always equal to someone else's two years on YouTube because the difference in your time freedom will matter more significantly probably than anything else. Your time freedom difference will matter. And the thing is, that is the thing that is not going to be told to you in a piece of a YouTube video for free because they'll never get views by the way. This is one of those people that believes time freedom is everything. If you actually want time freedom, you can become a freelancer, which is what I did. I love it because I can make my own schedule. I told you that info for free, you're not paying for it. I like giving out free info. I like genuinely helping people. I don't need a course to teach somebody that or just find a job that suits your schedule. I'm not selling a course on how to be a video editor because anyone can just ask me and I'll tell them how. I've had many people send me DMs on how to be a freelance video editor and I don't charge them for that info. <laughs> I don't charge $6,000 for somebody sending me two DMs. Also, the fact that he admitted that he will not make a video about something if it won't get views says a lot about his mindset as a youtuber and we already get enough shit as youtube coaches for the fact that oh we make content about making content but also the fact that when our videos underperform everyone calls us a fraud and a great fake guru and i'm kind of sick of it and i really would want to challenge more of these people to youtube boxing matches if i was only 10 years younger ah so really if you only care about views instead of care about helping people then yeah Obviously, you won't make a video about how the failure rate is about 90% or higher because that doesn't benefit you because you're obviously the main character and no one else is right. I'm glad other people are keeping you accountable as well because more and more people are starting to realize that you only care about what's best for you, not what's best for the people you are helping. It's a lot of ignorance. I think it comes from a place of not understanding creators who know better, who are successful, who have like a million subscribers do not say these things because they know better and they know that they got help from somebody. It's very rare to make it alone. And even if you do, you'll still get screwed. Ignorance means a lack of information. And if you think that a person who has watched your content for years yet doesn't see any actual growth from these tips you give us, that says more about you 
than me. You can't just keep talking about your success stories when you've literally admitted that the failure rate is about 90% or higher. You can't just ignore the people who haven't succeeded just because it doesn't benefit you. And then you go on about how it's very rare to make it alone when really that's just a tactic you're using to keep your little culty fan club in arm's reach. There was no YouTube help community when I got started and I got screwed. I got 50% of my AdSense taken by a multi-channel network it, it, that promised to help YouTubers. No big YouTubers warned us about multi-channel networks. It was a bad move on my part for signing because it was very naive, but on their part because they really took advantage of someone who worked really hard and was really struggling. I've got so many friends that are smaller channels and it really pisses me off that they're gonna get completely boned by this whole thing. Gonna continue giving away their revenue, but th these networks don't really do anything else for them. And that's why later we found out that a lot of YouTubers were working for multi-channel networks or they got snookered too. I mean, look at Defy Media. They screwed over Smosh and then everyone got into the Defy Media because they thought, oh, well, if Smosh is with them, then they're legit. Did you guys see this email? And it's an email saying that we've all been effective immediately laid off. Yeah everybody at once. The YouTube advice niche disproportionately does more help for small YouTubers than it does for good. And no one has to buy a course if they don't want to. And frankly, as far as I'm concerned, no one who's not monetized should be buying a YouTube course. And no one who's broke should try to disproportionately think that YouTube will be the thing. YouTube doesn't pay well enough and not fast enough. I make good money for like three years. It doesn't pay fast enough to change your life quickly. YouTube is a long game. Which is funny because Roberto Plake is playing the long con with these people, I swear. If you go in with the mindset of, I'm gonna be famous. Zach Stone is gonna be famous. You're going into YouTube for the wrong reasons. It makes you honestly question his motive for his content in the first place. Especially when it's very clear that Roberto benefits from these courses because they're his courses. His benefits are vastly disproportionate to all of the people giving him money. So like freelancing is the fastest way to make money in a pinch if you're struggling or if you're broke and you don't have to buy courses for that. You can learn a lot online for free or you can go to community college or you can get some free vocational training and you can do that very well. Wait a minute, Roberto. So because you don't have a course on video editing, then you suggest to look up some free content. Yet when it's a topic that's even slightly in your favor, you'll try to sell your thing because, well, going it alone is basically impossible. So join us and we'll help you be successful because that's the best case scenario for you. Even though it's really the best case scenario for Roberto. I don't think 80% of my advice applies to hobby creators. It could if you want to transition. Then why don't you make that abundantly clear on your course pages or your YouTube channel or your bio? Oh, right. Because then it would turn off potential customers. My bad. No one has to buy anything from me, especially if they're not monetized. If you are a creator and you do want to buy my book, it's $10 for a Kindle book and it's $14.99. There's no productive way to spend $10 to $14 anyway. There's not that many productive ways to spend $15 and better yourself. There is very little downside to buying a $15 book. In terms of $15 to better yourself, I'm not here to hawk my book, but I'm just saying it's like buying a $15 book is not going to be a waste of money. They're not really trying to teach you anything. You see, the main goal is to keep you hooked on their products, to reprogram your mind to think that you need the next thing and the next thing that they release and the next thing after that, all while smiling and happily taking out your credit card and swiping it whilst giving them millions and making you poorer or in more debt. If you don't think you learn from courses and you don't have good experience with courses, you shouldn't buy them. All of the specific overlays I wanted to do, using the Stream Deck for sound effects and scene changes, I googled all that and it was free if you don't think you benefit from one-on-one -on -one coaching with somebody or they're not your personality or whatever your cup of tea then you shouldn't coach with them is dan lock a cult yes or no is high ticket closer a cult yes or no yes you should figure out what learning style is going to better you but you also should not have such lofty expectations because everyone who says that everything can be accomplished with free content is ignorant because everything can't be accomplished that needs to be with free K through 12 education. 13 years of free education doesn't always produce stellar results as it is. 
So if you can't, with some level of hands-on experience in 13 years, always get good results, abandoning everyone to Google and YouTube and expecting they can teach themselves is ridiculous and it's arrogant. This man thinks school is free. We're not even talking about college. We're talking about kindergarten through high school. You can tell this man has never had a kid in school. School supplies aren't free. School books aren't free. In fact, why don't we do some thorough research, shall we? Field trip fees different fees per grade, a charge for a half day of kindergarten because most states only pay for half, not to mention how much more expensive private school is. Catholic schools charge differently, and so do independent schools. Jeez, no wonder I was homeschooled. Oh wait, there's more! Before and after school care, school uniforms, lunch money, and an annual bus pass. Ironic that you thought school was free considering you brand yourself as an educator. I can dunk every one of these freaking arguments, and it doesn't mean that you should buy a course. I'm just saying that the arguments against them are very poorly constructed arguments and they're usually very arrogant arguments that do not take people into consideration while virtue signaling that they're protecting them from something. Can you dunk on these arguments? Because so far, doesn't seem like it with your damage control call. Oh, now it's okay to not buy your course? Okay, then I won't. Very poorly constructed because you don't agree with it. Very poorly constructed because it's questioning why you made these courses in the first place. Very poorly constructed, yet it made you rage like a madman on Twitter. Point is, one of the reasons why I did make the video, because I took into consideration all of the people that you're selling to. You're selling a possible, maybe, chance at success, which is in no way definite and doesn't work for everyone. You keep using the phrase, virtue signaling, which is the action or practice of publicly expressing opinions or sentiments intended to demonstrate one's good character or moral correctness of one's position on a particular issue. Meaning that, in your opinion, my opinion was being used to show how great of a person I am, which is not what I was doing in the video, or this one. It's not that I'm protecting people from being your potential customer, I'm merely making them aware to think for themselves and ask themselves, why is this person selling courses? Why is this person helping? What do they get from this exchange? AKA consumer awareness. The complaints don't come from customers. The critics are not customers. They don't buy any. Over the next several weeks, I spent dozens of hours and hundreds of dollars taking different online influencer courses. That this is definitely a case of FOMO fear of missing out. You can get pretty far on free YouTube advice, but not everyone learns that way. Ah yes, I know some people who only learn by spending money on YouTube courses. Listen, as far as I'm concerned, you've been the only one complaining about free YouTube advice. Because well, you can't profit from it. And it's like, no, no one's gonna tell someone, oh well you should tutor students for free out of the goodness of your heart if you're an A student. Because that's just ridiculous and it makes you a to say this that. This man is trying to relate a school tutor to a one-on-one -on -one session with him. I smell a straw man argument. A form of argument, whereas the real subject of the argument was not addressed or refuted, but instead replaced with a false one. Basically, those two things are not the same. A tutor helps you get good grades so you can hopefully pass your tests at your not free school and hopefully eventually graduate to get a high school diploma to then use to either go to college for further education or to get a job right after high school. Roberto's one-on-one -on -one session is you pay him money and then learn about YouTube. That's it. They are not the same. One is necessary, the other isn't. With school, at least if you're good at tests, you actually earn something in the end. But with courses, it's never guaranteed that you'll actually get something out of it, whether it be info or success. Given up on the skeptics, the problem is they reach more than just themselves and they infect the minds of small YouTubers. I love that you use the analogy that I infect the minds of people. Funny, because I'm wearing a Venom shirt. <laughs> because when I was in that call on Twitter, listening to this guy, I felt like Roberto infected the minds of everyone else in that call. And that I was the only one actually seeing what was going on. It was damage control because he got called out for the way he does business. I don't infect anyone. And for him to even use the word infect very shyly in that way really showed me how manipulative that phrasing was. The more I listen to this guy, the more I think about information control. Because Roberto has become this authoritative figure to these people, especially when he's convinced them that it's impossible to do it alone, and provides all of this info for them to learn, as well as his buddies, to create this ecosystem of all of these hopeful people to profit from. Just seems very culty in my opinion. That if I'm sitting there and I'm telling you uh, and I'm espousing the gospel of luck, I'm cheating you 
out of the fruits of knowing not only what hard work does, but what specific knowledge does for you and applying specific knowledge to yourself in the right way. And also the benefit of perspective and the perspective of age too. Because I've been on YouTube from the beginning and a lot of you have not. I've been working hard for like six years, but oh, I now need specific knowledge that you know that for some reason I can't find the answer in free content? Hmm, interesting. Also, pulling the card of, well, I know better than all of you because I've been around since the start of YouTube, which is an attempt to give him more credibility, but I see right through Or it. saying, oh, it should come from these people that I like and that I respect and everything. The, those people aren't always educators. The most successful content creators may not be able to teach it because they, they are great players. Great players aren't always great coaches and great coaches aren't always great players. You're trying to discredit the people that are literally more successful than you are simply because you don't classify them as coaches. 45,000 channels that have a silver play button in America. There's 300,000 channels globally and there's 4,500 in America. Half of them are corporations and existing celebrities. So there's actually probably only 20,000 actual YouTubers in America that have silver play buttons as far as individual humans. So there's 5,500 channels in America with gold play buttons. A lot of those are celebrities. A lot of those are late night shows, media companies. You could take that number and you could you know, cut it down to about 3,000 actual homegrown YouTubers. That's less people than fill up the San Diego Convention Center with room to spare in the main auditorium. Not even the full conventions, they're just the main auditorium. That's how narrow the success is. There's 100 million channels globally, and so that's, that's how bad success is in terms of the margins there, if you register it that way. 90% of content creators don't have 10,000 subscribers. He literally explains in detail how the odds are stacked against you, especially since you are competing against celebrities, TV channels, and media corporations, which is something I didn't even think about, which are massive. He did the work for me. And it's incredibly difficult to be a, a content creator, and it's incredibly difficult to be a successful content creator. And it's incredibly difficult to make that success last for 10 years. See, I told you from the words of the guru himself, it's incredibly difficult to be a successful content creator. Please tell me we're almost done. I wanna shoot myself in the head. And I respect working class content creators because I know that my some of my best friends are and were working class content creators and they did their time and they had their moment and now they get to do what they love and they get to do a lot of it full time, one way or another. And there's more than one way to accomplish it. So does that mean you respect me? Because technically I'm a working class creator. However, I'm asking because it hasn't seemed like you've been respecting me this entire time. Also, he says there's more than one way to accomplish Which it. Which is what I've been saying this whole freaking time. Uh, you know what course I bought? I bought a public speaking course. And I went to a public speaking training from Michael Port, and it made me a less awkward content creator on camera to do that. It also helped my speaking career. And I only needed 30% of the course, but it was the 30% that I sucked at. It doesn't matter if you need the full book or the full course. Like, I only needed the 30% that I was god awful at. He's trying to up the legitimacy of his course by telling an anecdotal story about how a course worked for him to make you think that a course will work for you too. It's really funny that he admits he didn't even need the entire course, even though he spent money on the entire course. You most likely could find that 30% free on YouTube or the internet in general, mostly because I know there's a lot of videos on YouTube about public speech. Speaking. And I think that there are a lot of people that are just stubborn or sometimes cheap that will try to project onto the rest of you and talk you out of doing things that are in your own interest. They don't want to do those things or they can't do those things. So they don't want you doing them either. I would not say I'm cheap, especially with YouTube. Put this into context. When I started YouTube early on, I bought a thousand dollar camera that was on sale for like 40% or 70% off because it was a Black Friday sale. That's how I invested in myself by getting better equipment. And I'm not projecting, I'm raising questions. Build the foundation of your confidence. Don't act from insecurity and really focus on the four categories of talent, training, time, and tools, and that could dramatically change the trajectory of your career 
if you even improve slightly in one of those four things, one way or another. Have confidence. We all get insecure sometimes. I have talents in video production, years of training from watching this free content, as well as personal experience. I have time freedom because I'm a freelancer and I have the tools to make videos, which is my equipment. But I'm still not successful. Good thing that guy on the internet gave me Roberto's new book for free. Thanks, guy. Wow, now I can truly learn to be successful. Nothing can stop me now. What's interesting about this book is that it brings up a very interesting perspective. And by that, I mean that if you are just a beginner on YouTube and literally know nothing about YouTube and social media, you will literally benefit from any YouTube video or course slash book you buy information wise. But if you're a YouTuber like me, who's been on the platform for six years, there's nothing new this book is going to tell you besides Roberto's personal life experiences, as well as possibly not knowing the people he's referring to in his case studies. I already know how creators are profiting from their passion in the creator economy. And having read the book, I can say with full confidence that this is definitely a case of FOMO fear of missing out because you'll miss out on all of the info you already know about YouTube. But that's the thing because the amount of people in the comments that were pressuring me to try it for myself, even though I figured I wasn't going to learn much simply because I've learned a lot about YouTube over the years. You can have all the info in the world, but if you don't act upon it, nothing is going to happen. But even then with all of the necessary info and the right action, it still won't guarantee success. What I basically learned from this book was Roberto's life experiences, which makes sense because this book is him trying to convince you that he knows what he's talking about to legitimize his career. The problem with these channels is that nobody is keeping them accountable for their actions. Because how are you going to criticize a coach if you're not one, well, maybe if they have paid courses that so clearly benefit them when they themselves don't make it clear that it benefits them mostly in the long run. Even when you get to the end of the book, his secrets are not secrets because it's info you can just as easily find for free on the internet and YouTube. Getting ranked videos with SEO is not a secret. Passive and automated income is not a secret and networking with people in person is not a secret because how are you going to keep this many people a secret? <laughs> so to give you an example, we're going to go over a few of the chapters in the book and see if we can find any certain trends with the topics in each chapter. So in chapter one, I didn't know three of the things out of the 16 topics and the ones I didn't know related to Roberto's personal experiences, which means most of the chapter wasn't really useful to me. In chapter two, out of the 23 topics in this chapter, I didn't know five of the things because those five things had to do with Roberto's story. Chapter three, out of the nine topics, I didn't know about one and a half of the topics because those had to do with Roberto's personal experience. I think I'm seeing a trend here. And that's the thing. Every chapter is like this. Intro to topic, Roberto's experiences, a few case studies, sometimes a rant, and then the topic of the chapter with info that I already know. This is why I know that all of this paid content isn't for me. And if you know a lot about YouTube already, it's not for you. What I learned was a bunch of personal anecdotes about how sad yet skill heavy he was. So basically what I got out of it was an autobiography, which definitely isn't something you'd expect out of a book titled like this. All right. I'm officially ending this beef. Mostly because one, I'm right. Two, these channels don't have a foot to stand on when it comes to them arguing and defending their own business practices. Three, this man had to watch my video, rant on Twitter, and then do a public spaces call to finally admit that the failure rate is about 90% or higher instead of making that clear from the get-go because then he wouldn't have as many customers. Meaning the odds are literally not in your favor when it comes to being a successful YouTuber. And not everyone will become a successful YouTuber. Four, you cannot invalidate someone else's genuine experiences. That's why I was so split in the comments, because you have people who have been hurt by these channels, and then you have the people who vouch for the channel, acting like, in my opinion, culty simps. Five, the amount of manipulation and hypocrisy is absolutely ridiculous. And it drives me insane because a lot of people just don't see through this. But I also understand because I was in that same place years ago. And I also wanted to believe that I could be successful on YouTube, hoping that if I did every single little thing that these advice channels were spouting out, then I would finally be successful, but to no avail because Again, the odds are stacked against you. And these channels don't make that inherently clear from the start, but they won't 
because they are running a business. And anything that puts that in jeopardy is bad for their reputation, even though so many people have given them flack already, which is good. Six. Now you can shush about how I've never tried paid content before, even though I bought Gary Vee's book in the past, and I'm pretty sure I bought another book about YouTube advice. I don't remember what the title or cover was, but it was years ago. Speaking of books, technically I didn't pay for the book, so that means I found a loophole where I got the paid content free, considering that I basically learned the same info in my YouTube journey that was also in the book. Now I don't have to pay for info that I already know. Thanks, guy. To end this, I have to mention to not send hate to this guy or any of these advice channels. This update and the video before it was made for you to understand that all these people are doing is focusing on their business and are trying to scale it literally in any way, shape, or form they possibly can for financial gain, even if it means making courses worth thousands of dollars for the sake of passive and automated income. They aren't making art on YouTube. They are, ironically, profiting off of so many other people's art. Yet no one has really taken the time to even say that on YouTube, besides literally one other person I can think of. You don't need to spend money on this paid content because they're are no secrets to YouTube. Only people gatekeeping info from you to make it seem like there are secrets to YouTube. And chances are somebody else already said all of this paid info for free somewhere else on the internet. Or just learn from your own experiences on YouTube. That's what I did. Go and make art you're proud of. And if it gains an audience, well, be thankful for it. Now, I know I went into a lot of detail about the situation, and that's mostly because I just wanted to clear everything up so people truly understand how and why people run these kind of businesses. The only downside to this video is that I don't have the funds to buy all these courses and paid content. I got super lucky that a guy, random guy on the internet just gave me a book to review. And while doing research for this video, I found this video. He actually pays for a bunch of courses and gives an honest review about all of them. It's a very interesting look at a big YouTuber perspective about this whole thing, whereas my video was obviously the small YouTuber perspective of it. So if you have any cynicism with my videos, watch his videos and see if your mind is changed. It definitely changed mine and actually very much inspired me to make the content that I want to make instead of chasing numbers and statistics. So go watch that video if you have the time. I know this video is long and that video is probably longer, but if you have the time, it's definitely worth the watch, especially if you are a small YouTuber.